This lab is supposed to be on the autonomic nervous system. And I spend a lot of time on the sympathetic nervous system because it's obvious big structures. But we need to give the parasympathetic nervous system some lip service. And then we're going to have to talk about a really important nerve that actually has fibers from the autonomic nervous system, even though they're going to skeletal muscles, and that's the phrenic nerve. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the four parasympathetic nerves that are cranial nerves. This one is the first one, it is the oculomotor nerve, and it is a very busy nerve. What it's going to do is it has many branches right there, and it's hard to see all the branches. I've actually been playing around with it for several minutes. These branches are going to the extrinsic muscles of the eye. There's another branch right there that's actually going into the eye. Let's see if it, it's going to go into the eye and it controls the iris. It's actually it controls the constrictor muscles of the iris. The second nerve we're going to talk about is the glossopharyngeal nerve. See this large salivary gland right here? The glossopharyngeal has a branch that is going to go to that large salivary gland. And that's always bugged me because see that that's a branch of the facial nerve right there. It's the buccal branch. It's passing right next to that large salivary gland, but it's not controlled by the facial nerve. So the facial nerve is our next one. And yes, I went out of order. One of the branches of the facial nerve is going to go up to the lacrimal gland and it produces lacrimal secretions that is going to let you cry. So the facial nerve controls lacrimal secretions. It goes up to this lacrimal gland. Then we have our four smaller salivary glands. One, two, three, hello, number four. And they are all controlled by branches of the facial nerve as well. Oops, that's the hypoglossal nerve there. Branch of the facial nerve. It's not behaving with it, me today. So they're controlled by the branches of the facial nerve. Lastly, and most important, this is the vagus nerve right there. Vagus nerve, meet class, class meet vagus nerve. And it goes all the way down into the thoracic cavity. And then it actually keeps going down into the abdominal cavity. It's the main parasympathetic nerve of the abdominal cavity and the thoracic cavity. So those are the four parasympathetic nerves that originate from the cranial nerves. Now, while I'm on this model, I need to give some lip service to another important nerve, and that nerve is the phrenic nerve. So here's the phrenic nerve. It's coming from the cervical plexus. Remember, that's the nerve I care about. It's going all the way to the diaphragm. It powers your diaphragm. If you sever the phrenic nerve, the person is not going to be able to breathe. Now, there's actually one guy who is, has a paralyzed diaphragm, and he's able to do buccal breaths when he's awake, but he needs a ventilator when he's asleep. I thought that was cool. So those are the nerves we're looking at in this section. So you're going to watch a video from Ackland. He is going to do a cadaver dissection of the phrenic nerve and the vagus nerve. He agrees with me what the two important nerves are there. And I'm going to send you to this picture twice. First one, this one right here, you're going to find the plexes, and you're going to find the phrenic nerve. And then the other one, this one, you are going to find the four cranial nerves that are part of the parasympathetic nervous system. No, it's not drill and kill at all to emphasize those four cranial nerves at all. Oh, look, there's the vagus right there. So that's what this activity is. Thank you.